Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we are continuing our discussion on academic self-efficacy, particularly in the context of reading a journal article. All right, so what's going on with journal articles? Well, journal articles for social sciences are slightly different than journal articles for STEM, but really they have a lot in common. So let's do it in the context of a chemistry journal article that you're going to read. The thing here is that journal articles in science are set up basically the same way. They have an abstract, they have an introduction, they have, sometimes they have all in the, before the introduction they might have a background, just interesting. Um, it will definitely have some questions in the midst of the introduction. We'll talk about the, what those look like. There's a method section or an experimental section. There's a results section. There's a discussion section. Oh my goodness, I'm squeaky. And there's a conclusions and possibly if you're really having a great time, there's a future work. That might be in the midst of the conclusion. Sometimes it is, it's buried in the midst. Sometimes it is its own thing. Okay, so here's the deal. When you're reading a, a journal article, often people get really, they start with the beginning, they're reading from the beginning to the end and they get totally bogged down by this section right here, the methods and experimental section. Let me just give you a sense on this, folks. The methods and experimental section is meant for someone else to be able to take that journal article and totally reproduce that work, whatever it is. That's what we do in science. We publish in order to get our ideas out there, but also to publish, we publish for the sense of getting our experiment out there so someone else could replicate it so that we could be validated in our approach, okay? So that's actually what that is for. So unless you plan on reproducing this work, you don't need to really delve into the methods or experimental section in incredible detail. Just kind of skim it if you're even gonna do anything, okay? Because it gives you a sense of what they did. But do not get bogged down in that section. Your job, should you choose to accept it, is most of the time to read the abstract, the very first thing, that's their summary of the article. That's what they're saying, hey, this is what our article is about. You're gonna read the conclusions. What did they come up with? What did they decide in the end? You're gonna read the discussion possibly because that says, okay, based off of previous work, this is where we were. This is what we kind of figured out from our results versus previous work. And if all else fails, you might also read the results. Okay, if you are going to reproduce this work, if it is a really important article in your field, or it is an important article in terms of your research advisor, then you read abstract, you read the introduction, which gives you the background information, so it tells you all the articles that were really important before you got to this one, that were using this, all of that previous work to do this experiment, you read the results, you read the discussion, you read the conclusions. You still skip the methods section unless you're gonna reproduce it. Then you get an, a sense of that. You go up through that in detail. That's kind of the sense, okay? Most of the time the results are, at least in science, are graphs or interesting pieces. The results will tell you what they did in the midst of the experiment. And you can go back to the methods section and just double check what they did. Most people, when they are reading, when they've already read kind of seminal papers in a field, so they've read the most important papers in the field, they're up to date, they're going to read the abstract, they're going to read the conclusions, and maybe they really kind of have a sense already of the introduction. They know what the background information is. They might read the results in the discussion. Okay, so kind of, here's the way I would do it. If I'm in this field, abstract first, Conclusion second, results in discussion third. Okay, this is also happens to be the way you set up 
a journal article. And you usually write the abstract last because you have to write the background, right? So this is really introduction slash background. This is the work that led us to this place. You have the method slash experimental stuff in the midst. Your results are the graphic, or not the graphic. <laughs> that sounds like a comic or not such a great, you know, like graphic violence or something. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about chart representations of your work, of your um, experimental results, right? So that's usually what we're talking about. So you'll read the results. We'll talk about what the discussion is. The discussion is usually how do these results fit in the midst of all of that background. And then the conclusions, this was the most important findings that we had from this work. And future work might give you a sense of what you would want to do next. All right. That's how you read a journal article, folks. Don't get bogged down in the details. Until next time.